Hello and welcome to some more Star Citizen news, this time for the 22nd of February, lots of little pieces today. Funding for Star Citizen is now over $179 million and it continues to pour cement onto being the most crowdfunded anything of all time, partly in thanks to the recent Vulcan pre-sale which goes on full concept sale today until the 2nd of April. That is a whole month, over a month of concept sale goodness. It's a multi-role support ship for repair, rearm and refuel gameplay and was $185 on Warbond. I will get a ship buyer's guide out as soon as possible when the full post about the ship is released later today. There's also going to be an FAQ later as well and we'll uh, do a little update too. Something that was actually pointed out to me that there is the potential that they are trying to push the Vulcan into the game this year with 3.3 in September. Well, that's just a rumor. The service beacons are coming in 3.2, which covers a huge amount of the gameplay that the Vulcan does offer, uh, as well as drones and the extra repair functionality coming in 3.3. It looks like it could be the case that we could see the Vulcan this year. But as I said, just a rumor at the moment. They've updated the super expensive Grand Admiral ship pack as well, the Provectus, featuring 30 vessels, extra liveries, hangar collectibles. It's available for $2,850 of store credit, though you get a $100 discount if you do buy it for cash. Far too expensive for my taste personally, especially when you can get everything in game. Much better spending under $100 in my opinion, but entirely up to you guys. It's gonna be good for some backers that have lots of store credit and a need for ships and go, well, I have all of those ships anyway, and it, this saves me some money, so. Check that out if you are so inclined. The ship loaner list has also been updated. This contains info of what ships are unreleased that you'll get to have a different ship in the meantime to fly in the Alpha, if you see what I mean. They give you a loaner ship. They go, your ship is not flyable. Have a loaner ship. Um, it's been updated, so there are some new ones and some other bits and pieces have been moved around. Uh, for example, if you grab a Vulcan, you will get a freelancer until that Vulcan is flyable. I'll drop the full list in the description below so you can see what your ships have turned into in the meantime. Today's ATV around the verse will be looking at the Squadron 42 update with a more of a focus on complex AI systems being implemented into the game and the massive crew of the Idris frigate which appears in Squadron 42 where there are 81 individual crewmen all of their own rank, personality, name and role. It's not one you want to miss because we want to see where AI is going. AI is quite possibly the thing that is holding up Squadron 42, getting those AI and NPCs working perfectly with their new subsumption. With the persistent universe, it's much more likely to be being, being held up or um, I think it's maybe take the longest is that server meshing and that network support, but they're both giant tasks. Star thing. So there was an interesting article from Dual Shockers about Star Citizen and Squadron 42, and in this one, more about CIG Studios. They actually have an interview with Aaron Roberts next week as well, so that could be interesting and is definitely one to watch. So they talk about here the staff growing to 475 members working on Star Citizen. Cloud Imperium Games currently has five offices, with the recent opening of the new Foundry 42 location in Derby, UK. That only has 15 staff members, though the studio does just focus on facial animation, it seems. The largest office is the main Foundry 42 UK office, located in Wimslow by Manchester, with a headcount of 234 at the time of writing that article. Uh, the Foundry 42 office in Frankfurt has a staff of 80. The studios in the US are much more compact, with the Los Angeles studio at 75, and the Texas studio with 71 staff. They do all have more focuses on certain areas, with like the Austin team more focused on the networking and back-end services side, I believe. One of the major reasons their development in the UK is so large is because they have sizable tax relief for game development studios in the UK, so it actually saves a lot of money doing that. It's worth reading the article and bookmarking Jewel Shockers, as they are putting out some interesting articles on Star Citizen, and as I said, they have an interview with Erin next week. GPU stuff. I also saw a GPU graphics card -y troubleshooting guide and best practices of how to install and update your drivers and that sort of stuff on Spectrum. It does also go through multi-screen large resolutions and resolution scaling too and is sort of like a semi-official guide as it's been posted by a dev. Check it out for the optimal Star Citizen experience at the moment. As I believe everyone is aware, Star Citizen Alpha is buggy and incredibly unoptimized, so this sort of stuff does actually help quite a lot. We will also be 
be looking at the My Radar app in the near future. This is a real life weather tool that you can have on your phone and go, oh, what is the weather like here? Oh, data numbers on weathers and oh, let's see what happens with the weather tomorrow. But it also has the weather and surface data for the moons in Star Citizen 3.0.1, sort of, currently, um, which is super cool. It has, like, it, it kind of crunches the weather data and simulates it. L links below to check out the app and to mess around with it in the Star Citizen universe. But we will be doing a full video on that and um, singing its praises and seeing what the future might bring with similar things or with what my radar might do or what Star Citizen might do with real accurate weather simulations. On a more personal note, my redecoration is complete and I'm just waiting on uh, a couple of things uh, like the sound panels to go up, uh, the acoustic foam to improve the sound quality a bit um, and the decoration. So I've got loads of canvases of like hanger flare and screenshots in game that are going up on the walls. All to increase my productivity and generally mean I can stream and record whenever I want. I'm an insomniac. So being able to record at 2 a.m. or 3 a.m. in the morning without worrying about waking the neighbours will be great. And just the general audio quality improvements should be pretty good as well. So thank you very much for that, guys. That was entirely funded by um, donations from the stream. So thank you. You guys are legendary. Woo! Woo! Every month we have a giveaway for a ship for February. It's for the luxury 890 Jump donated by our featured org, Sync Synchronizers. They're an org that plan to encompass all of the gameplays that Star Citizen has to offer, though they do oppose piracy. They seek members to add to the mature family of both casual and more hardcore players alike, but there's no real other restrictions on membership. Links below if you're interested in checking them out. They are active in Star Citizen now and have a Discord for you to chat up and bob on. All you need to do to be in for a chance of winning that 890 Jump is be subscribed to my YouTube channel and then comment on any of my Star Citizen content during the month. Do you have any questions about anything we discussed, about Squadron 42 or Star Citizen's development, gameplay mechanics or whatever, or suggestions for videos? Chuck them in the comments below. A special thank you to my Patreons who allow me to create the amount of content I do. If you're interested in becoming one of those lovely chaps, then please check out the links to Patreon down below too, as well as everything else we've talked about will be down there. Please don't forget to like and subscribe, as it really does help me, and I'll see you in the verse.